it's not too late to boost up the value of your Roth IRA without impacting your taxes too much. If you've ever thought the question of, should I have more in Roth, then this video is for you. We help a lot of people in their 50s and 60s create their ideal retirement plan. And a common thing that we hear is, oh, I wish I just had more money in my Roth IRA, or I wish I just started contributing to it earlier. And I usually just remind them of that old Chinese proverb. You might've heard this one before, but it's the best time to fund a Roth was 20 years ago, but the second best time is today. I think it went something like that, right? But you might be thinking to yourself, well, I can't fund a Roth because my income's too high, so I can't contribute, or I'm already in such a high tax bracket already, it doesn't make sense for me to, to do that right now, or it doesn't make sense for me to even convert from my IRA to my Roth IRA because of that high tax bracket. And if you're, some of these terms are, are getting confusing in your head, I'll explain these coming up. But if you're thinking that, or if you're looking at the value of your IRA, and your 401k, and then you're kind of mapping it out over the next 10 or 20 years, and then you're starting to think, uh, you might have that thing that they call a tax time bomb. When you get to your 70s and then you're forced to take out of those pre-tax accounts, I'm gonna share some ways to think about your tax efficient withdrawal strategy so that you can maximize the amount that you get into your Roth, and then also pay less tax over your lifetime. So let's zoom out for just a minute and do a quick refresher on some of these concepts before getting into the ideas. So um, one big thing here, we're already on the iPad, we've got three main accounts that we're talking about, right? You've got the pre-tax accounts, which is kind of like your, or is your 401k or your traditional IRA. After tax is the Roth and then taxables like your joint account or TOD or individual account that you have at these custodians. And as you already know, the pre-tax account, the money that you put in, you usually get a deduction for on your taxes. But then when it's coming out to you, then you're paying tax on whatever comes out to you. Now for the Roth after tax money that goes in, usually no deduction, but then it comes to you and it is after tax, you already paid the tax, so tax free. In, in quotations. And then taxable, that has more to do with the dividends and the interest and the capital gains or losses that are happening within that account. So the main two um, that we're thinking about today are these two. Now, as I said before, a lot of people, they always wish that they had more in Roth, but really the, the goal here is let's find the facts and let's get the facts to help us decide if that's really a good idea because it might not even make sense for you to withdraw money or have a Roth in your withdrawal strategy. Sometimes people say they want more in Roth, but really the tax benefit isn't that great. And one other high level concept uh, just before we get into it is the, um, the Roth conversion, which you probably know or you've heard about. And that's the idea of not a contribution to these accounts, but really it's a, uh, they call it a conversion when it goes from the pre-tax to the after-tax. And anything that goes to the after-tax would be considered taxable income the year that you do that. So I'll give you an example of that coming up too. And some people think, you know, why would I wanna pay tax, more tax in retirement when I get there? Um, well, it's, it's really, it doesn't feel good when you do it, but if we're thinking long-term, it could make sense. It kind of reminds me of that, uh, that uh, saying of disruption always follows intention, right? It's, it's like that law of the world where you decide to, to go exercise and you're gonna go all in and you exercise, you do it, and then the next day you feel a lot worse than the day before. Or if, uh, you know, if there's an addict that makes a positive decision to stop uh, doing whatever he's doing, he's gonna feel a lot worse the next day. So just be aware of that feeling as you're thinking about this Roth conversion, know that there is gonna be tax to pay, but if we can map it out and actually look at the facts and look over the long term, that's when we can feel confident about doing it and actually feel, you'll feel better about doing it when you can map it out. And I'll show you what I mean. We're playing the long game here, right? It's not how much, uh, you know, how can I reduce taxes the most next year? It's how do we reduce taxes over your lifetime and your heirs? lifetime. Right now, your kids or your heirs, whoever you pass money on to, um, you, we've really got a decision. We've got three places that we can send, uh, send money whenever we pass away. Family, charity, 
or the government. And when you think about some of these uh, rules around pre-tax monies that get uh, inherited, well, right now, your heirs, they most likely, current rules, they'd have to take all that money out in, in about 10 years, sometime over that 10-year period. And if you're passing away in your 80s, they might be in their late 50s or early 60s. They might still be working and adding to the taxable income and having to pay um, more on that than, than you would right now. So again, a lot of factors here at play. And, and by the way, let me know if you like this kind of video and uh, give it a like, because that helps me figure out what type of videos are actually the most helpful, what type of video should we do more of on this channel. So how do we find the facts and figure out should we do a Roth conversion? So let's go over the five steps, and then I'll look at an actual example in a planning software and kind of show you what I mean. So step one is take the current plan that you have and estimate what's the value, just take the value of your pre-tax monies now and give an estimate over what the value is gonna be at age 73. So you can assign, you know, we're taking a guess here, assign any growth rate, 6%, 7% growth rate, depending on how you're invested. That's step one. See what the value will be when you're 73. That's about the time when you're gonna do required minimum distributions. So step two is figure out what the RMD or required minimum distribution is at that time, based on the value you just calculate it. And then also what you'll do once you get that RMD amount, add in any other income, pension or social security income, or maybe you know what is, uh, I don't want to get too, too confusing here, but what your taxable income might be from your taxable account because of dividends and interests and things like that, capital gains. Step four is just today, what's your current tax rate? What's your current tax rate if you were to convert or if you were to pay uh, on the next dollar on your taxes. And then think about what's your current tax rate when you're at that point in the future, age 73. So here, let me draw it out for you because uh, keep make it a little bit more clear. So all we wanna do really, here's the timeline, pretend you're 60, here's 73. What's the value of your IRA now? And then what's the RMD? right? That's the uh, required minimum plus just say social security. And then maybe, maybe that's just going to be, you know, it really depends. Everyone's different here, but maybe that's just going to be a uh, hundred K and your income right now might be 150 K. So that helps you make a decision on, on, uh, do Roth conversions make sense? Does contributing to Roth IRA make sense? And then now some people, their RMD, you know, is 400,000. And then you look at the difference there and uh, it helps make it clear. Now, whenever we get into the numbers, it can be hard. So there is a tool that I like to use. It's the, the, uh, the DIY retirement planner, my favorite DIY retirement planner below this link, which helps you look at Roth conversions and strategies there. So check that out. But let me show you an example. This isn't, the example I'm gonna show you is not the planner, but it's, it's our own software that we use just to kind of show you what, um, what it looks like and what the strategy is behind, behind all of this. So let's see, here is someone retiring early, right? This is just an example modeled, modeled um, off of someone. And don't pay attention to the values if you can see them. This is just an example. Um, and let's see, so he's retiring early and then this is him at age 75 when RMDs start to kick in required minimum distributions from his IRAs. And we can see his tax, by the way, this is his total taxes paid over the next however many years this is. But what if we switched up the strategy a little bit? And in these lower tax years, we started converting. So moving from IRA to Roth IRA, what's that gonna look like? So here's, here's an example. So if we start purposefully paying more taxes now, over a period of time, converting money from IRA to, from yeah, from traditional IRA to Roth, then look at all the tax savings he's gonna have. And you can actually get the real numbers, calculate um, the actual dollarize it, even though dollarize isn't really a word, you can actually see the real numbers and see if then it makes sense. So that helps you make a more confident decision about whether you're paying tax now 
uh, or whether you should just do it later. And by the way, we're going over a lot of things here. If this is your first time here to this retirement channel, I'm Dave Zoller and I own Streamline Financial with Tim and Luke and Sean. And we've helped hundreds of people create their ideal retirement. So if your advisors mainly just focused on investments in retirement and they're not thinking about the, what we're looking at today, tax planning or tax efficient withdrawal plan or income planning, then click on the get started button on our website for a free planning session. So if your scenario looked something like this, we can see that uh, we're not doing the Roth conversion while he's working, while they're working, but only when they stop working and earning an income where all of a sudden their taxable income goes way down. That was the time to do the Roth conversions. That was the Roth conversion sweet spot, at least for this scenario. So there might be something like that for you, but uh, do the evaluation, maybe check out the calculator or talk to a, a CFP professional and they can help model that out for you as well. Because as you think about it, there's really only a few things we can control in retirement. It's how much do we want to spend? How are we invested? And then what are the costs associated with that investing? And then also the last thing we can control is taxes. Although it seems like we can't because the government's making decisions, you can actually decide how much you want to pay in taxes and when. So if you want to go deeper, check out the uh, My Favorite Retirement Income Planner below. Or if you don't want to spend the time studying and learning and applying these things to yourself, reach out to me for a free planning session uh, for, with one of our CFP professionals. And, uh, and then we'll talk to you then. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, uh, give it a like, and then I'll know that, that I should do more like this. Thanks.